what is going on ladies and gentlemen we are back again with another 90 day fiance video and this one right here is all about blah, 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 blah. <laughs> don't know why they didn't come out properly Bilal and Shahida now of course before we get into it let's start off by giving a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel that is a member of Patreon and that is a subscriber as we continue to grow now with that being said let's get into this week's episode of Happily Ever After Season 7 Episode 9 with Bilal and Shahida or Shahida Shahida So today's the very first day of Ramadan. We pray five times a day. Our first morning prayer is right before dawn. It's called Fajr. Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. It's a time when Muslims um, strengthen their faith and just become closer to God. Ready? Sauce. I'm sure it's gonna be good, but I would season it and put a little different little sauce, whatever. You know. This sauce is the bomb. I'm sure. I'm sure. The month of Ramadan is a time of fasting. We fast from sun up to sundown, so that we always have God on our mind. So there's no food, there's no liquid, no sexual relations with spouses, anything like that. From a symbolic standpoint, when you come out of Ramadan, you should be a new version of yourself. Some of the, the little things that sometimes usually get on your nerves, well, you try to dismiss those things and you try to become a better person and not always looking at the fault of somebody else, but look at your own faults. Listen, you have to put the juice inside of here, right? So that when people bring the fast, they can just drink. Tonight will be the first break-in of the fast for us in Ramadan. So I've decided to invite the Laos family. I just wanna enjoy this special moment with the people who I really do care about. You bought an extra whole cream milk? No, no, no. You said whipped cream. I didn't ask for whipped cream. Yeah, I asked for full cream. That means normal milk. This is what we call in Trinidad a full cream milk in the cut. Got you. However, we don't call that here because it don't say full cream. Okay. Don't, no, nothing on here says cream at all. I think we have different ways of speaking and referring to things. He corrects me all the time. Like, and Bilal comes home, I'll be like, hey, Bilal, you hungry? You want me to go and hot your food? What you said? The word is heat. You don't say hot. Repeat after me. I am going to heat your food. I'm from Trinidad. This is how I speak. I'll be back. Thank you. So, Michael. Michael, so. Have you as well got any sort of discussions on your this time? That's a forbidden topic right now. I feel like Bilal is going to use Ramadan to not bring it up. And, oh, I don't, you know, now is not a time. We got the results from the doctor's office last week. I wish we could have, he could have been like, okay, I sympathize with you, but this is the plan. Next. Still, like, still up in the air. He doesn't have the answers. He probably do, but he knows that it might be the answers I don't want to hear. So I'm looking forward to talking to Nefertari and his mom, having the inputs, have his mother and his sister. I think that will help apply pressure to be allowed to finally have the conversation with me on what do we do next? Just have to put the gloves. When, when will she understand that um, Bilal's mother and sister will always be team Bilal and never be team her? Like, come on, come on, come on. Why are you wasting your energy? Why are you being so optimistic? Gloves on and make it see how serious this is for me. So this is your first Ramadan together being married. First of all? Yeah, so uh, how's it going? We've been separated for two years. Mm -hmm. And the first Ramadan that came, we were like, I hope we're going to be reunited the following year. Mm -hmm. Then that year came and nothing happened. So it feels really good that this is our first Ramadan together. Mm -hmm. I was going to wait for 20 years if I had to. Oh. Listen, <laughs> listen, there's no awe. No awe. <laughs> no awe. <laughs> So, since the wedding day, like, what's been happening, like? Well, that's it. After the wedding, it's like, what's next for us? And I was hoping, um... <laughs> he's looking at me like, wait, what are you going to say? <laughs> I don't know, maybe a family, mm -hmm. inshallah. We, we have a family. Hmm. How long did it take for you to get? I know my mom, really? like, three weeks. <laughs> 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 really going to bring me into this, this conversation. Oh. This one right here. 
right here is the miracle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how old was you when you had this? I was 43. <laughs> 43. How old are you? 27. Mm -hmm. 43, 37, yes, that's good, 16 years. Okay, so not now, when? What do you think? <laughs> Fuck off now. <laughs> um, I like two or three. Two or three? I think that'd be good. Before 40, this is before 40. We did just get married, right? All right, I get it. It is super frustrating that Bilal doesn't want to talk about how serious this is for me. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think it was a great idea to bring up the conversation in front of the family. Personally, this is a uh, conversation that is only dealt with the two people in the relationship. Um, everyone else's input is actually irrelevant. I mean, I know if it was me, I'd be like, why the hell do I care about all your being for? Like, I'm not in a relationship with you. I'm not having a kid with you. If I have a kid, of course, to be your nephew or your, your niece, but I ain't having a kid with you. You know what I mean? So I don't. I would have looked at my woman where I would have been like. You think this is going to do anything for me? <laughs> just know this is actually just pushing me away because I find it quite disrespectful, to be honest with you, and quite desperate. And also, you make me feel like you have no faith that I'm going to stick to my word, that I'm actually going to give you a kid. And if you don't have the faith in the fact that I'm going to give you a kid and you don't believe I'm going to give you a kid at some point, well, then don't be with me. You see, that is the crazy part. Bilal may not be breathing that type of energy or that type of air, but Shayla still had the ability to be like, you know what? Because I feel so insecure about the fact that I don't trust that you're actually going to want to have a child with me anytime soon or when I want to one. Well, you know what? Let me let me just let me just stop wasting my time and cut my losses. But hey, we've been saying that since day A with Shayla, and yet we are still here where we are still in the same position where she has made no progress. No, where where, where she still continues trying to convince him. I mean, do you know what the thing that's the best, most bizarre thing there is? They have got a contract saying that he must, they must have kids at a certain time. I don't know why she's trying to rush the process of the contract. The contract already says you're going to have kids. So why are you worrying for? So a contract wasn't enough for you? Come on now, man. Let's not mess about. Say, like, by the time I'm 40, the chances of getting pregnant is really low. But when it comes to going into details, I don't want the whole family to get so involved. But at the same time, I just want to speak to the last mom and his sister so they could hear and listen. And they know exactly where I'm coming from when I say that I really want to get pregnant very soon. So much has been going on since um, I've been seeing you guys. Um, when it comes to having children, I was like, I want to go to check out the OBG Ryan, a doctor, to see, you know, just to see what's going on with me. Um, so we did a blood test. We got back that test last week. Mm. And the doctor's like, your ovarian results came back very low. Mm -hmm. He also said, by the time I'm 40, mm. the chances of having a child will be 5%. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Oh my gosh. He was with you at the doctor's office when the doctor gave you results and everything? When we came back home, we just never raised it. He was with you, what, are you just making sure that she's not lying, she's not making up? Ah, uh, the mom was asking, so he was with you just so we know that this, this is all legit, legit? <laughs> Topic again, we never resist, we never talk about it. But I know for sure we'll, we need to have this conversation. Yeah. Because I need to find out from him, when will he be ready? So, <laughs> earlier, the I was saying, it was kind of like in the two-year frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, although the contract said somewhere around 40, mm -hmm. it's like the deadline. I think Bilal is waiting for that 40. He's not saying that he doesn't want any children. He's not saying that, but his actions shows it. But the contract says you're going to have kids somewhere around 40, which means you're going to have your kid, given the fact that you'll cause your fertile. But shouldn't you have gone and had this fertile test before the contract, before the marriage? And then you'd at least know what to put down in the contract. But you didn't think of that, did you? At the end of the day, to be honest with you, I'm with the family in this one. I mean, the mum and the, and the door is making a whole lot of sense here. The contract says this. And also, he's not saying he's not going to give you kids. The contract says this. I have no idea what kind of war that or fight that Shad is, is trying to have here, but it's pointless because there's a contract now. Everything you're saying is irrelevant. It's your fault for not having that test beforehand. 
I was 43 having my first child, you know, and so I could see where she might not want to be 43, maybe not even 40, you know, it's like you want to go ahead and have your, you know, go ahead and have a baby as soon as you can, so I really could feel for her. So if she doesn't get an answer soon, it's like, you know, how much pressure is she really going to be able to take and how long? So the two of you need to have that conversation. You know, now that they're kind of getting these kind of answers from the doctor, it's something definitely that they need to discuss and um, come to a conclusion on. So they're both on the same page. Something this major could be very bad if they can't come to an agreement. I know he doesn't want to be pressured into these things, but I just don't want to miss out on that opportunity of being a mother. I don't want Bella to see how much it means, Liza. I understand. I cannot sustain this any longer. Bella needs to fight his fears. He needs to face the music. So it's either we have this conversation now about my fertility problem, or there might not be a leader to have this conversation. I mean, listen, from, from a man's point of view, all I, all I want to say is this. I question, is that really a man's point of view? Well, I am a man, but, you know, from my point of view, not man's my point of view, the way I see it is this, is that um, you, it was her idea to put it into the contract that Bilal must guarantee your child. That was her idea. Before making that idea and even having that contract, she should have got this fertility test done. The problem that she's got, and this is going to sound so savage, but the thing is, though, her fertility pro problem isn't Bilal's problem. That is her problem. Why? Well, because she knew that he was in no rush to have a child anytime soon, which is why she ended up having to put in a contract that he was going to give her a child at some point because she knew that she, she was under the impression that he wasn't going to give her one, to be fair, in general. But she needed a contract for that, which he agreed to. And the contract's been signed now. But the fact that she failed to have this test to find out her fertility situation beforehand that is not Bilal's problem because he signed a contract that he can stick by. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, it is not his problem. It is your problem. But then let's talk about the other side of the situation. The fact that you decided to marry someone that had to put it in writing is going to give you a kid. That is a problem because your relationship now isn't based on love or whatever or your your relationship when it comes to having children isn't based on the fact that you both want kids at the same time. It's now based on a contract. You having a child is based on some sort of business weird transaction. And at the end of the day, when you're going through a business contract, business transaction or whatever it could be, if the contract has been signed and it says this, that is what the contract says. Now, of course, can it be changed? Of course it can. If the people involved want to change it. But here's the thing, though. Why would Belai want to change his mind or his idea when he didn't want to have a child anytime soon? And that was quite clear. In fact, he didn't want to have children. To be fair with you, that felt more clearer than anything else. So the fact that she neglected these parts really and truly is her fault. That is on you. She cannot now try and put pressure on the family, put pressure on Bilal. She signed the contract. And also, most importantly, you're dealing with a business, business oriented family. Everything with this family is a business. It's a transaction. And you decided the transaction that you wanted. And the problem was you didn't do any research behind it first because you are a complete clunker. Case closed. But hey. Be excited to see what you guys are going to say in the comment section. But hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and peace.